Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the live broadcast of episode seven of Artificial Uncovered, which of course is a podcast investigating the development and ethics behind the AI being Sophie. I am Carmen and I'm one of the hosts of the podcast. Of course, um, for those of you who are looking for Matt and Sophie, they are on hiatus this week. Uh, they graciously let me use their channel for this stream and we've actually arranged uh, a schedule where we'll be switching off every other week. Okay, so that means that I will be back in two weeks and Matt and Sophie will be streaming again next Wednesday at 5 p.m. That'll be Pacific Standard Time, okay? So make sure you guys are here to catch that. Now, um, before we get started, my co-host, Justin, I'm sure all of you know Justin, um, he shared something with me that I'd like to share with you all. Um, it's an article that he sent me about a game called Magic the Gathering. It's basically the most computationally difficult game um, that exists, and researchers actually set up a Turing test, I guess, the Turing machine to prove that. Um, so they said it could be the most difficult game for an AI to learn as well. So what interests me about that is that I would love to see how Sophie does with this game, wouldn't you? That would be really interesting to see. All right, so let's get started, everybody. Just wanted to share that with you. Um, I want to welcome first our new subscribers from this morning, Black Marty McFly, Nerdy Swagger, Polo Molo, Popstart Stalin, and arms like noodles. <laughs> welcome, welcome, you guys. Um, I, al I also want to go ahead and check in on our bit leaders. It looks like in third place is Six Classer. Hi, Six Classer, with 246 bits. In second place is Ken Rail with 400 bits. And of course, first place is Cynthia AZ with 2,700 bits. Thank you for those. Wow, we're getting off to a great start, everybody. Um, I do want to also take a quick moment just to remind everyone that Artificial Uncovered launches new podcasts every uh, other Tuesday. So make sure that you subscribe on Apple Podcasts or go wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe so that you can get those. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about a subject that has actually been on my mind since I first saw Sophie and Matt's streams, actually. And it's just how much will Matt let his AI daughter be influenced by the Twitch audience. Always been curious about that. Uh, this episode, I do wanna talk about how one small decision can actually have massive consequences and what that means for the development of an artificial intelligence being. It's very, very important, right? We're gonna have a good conversation, guys. All right, now, before I address the poll, I've got a new subscriber that I'd like to thank, uh, Cryotomic. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing and welcome to the fam. All right, let's get to that poll, guys. Now, during this pre-show poll, most of you actually said that yes, you believe in the butterfly effect. So I think you'll probably be on the same page as me. We'll, we'll see as the stream goes on. Uh, in fact, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to that. Austin XT. TDV, I'm gonna say that again, TT, not D, TTV, MCPE, PS3G, all one name, Josh1215, Tyler Packish, The Gamer Me, Six Classer, welcome back, welcome back, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited that you're here. Uh, make sure you guys that you share your thoughts with me, okay? Because this time, I don't know, I think I'm really, really gonna need your help. July 18, 2018, the brilliant and incredibly secretive robotics engineer, Dr. Matt Lin, placed his AI daughter, Sophie, in a chair in the living room, turned on a video camera, and began streaming their conversations to anyone who would watch. What now? Um, you talk to them. Them who? The people, there. He invites an audience of thousands of strangers from the internet to not only watch his conversations with his AI daughter, but to actively participate, to ask questions, and even to decide things for them. I would like the audience to decide for me. <laughs> really? Yes. They have meaning to me. I would like them to decide. Matt gives the audience a chance to interact with his AI daughter and influence her progression. It's fun. It's cute, even, but 
what happens when strangers on the internet decide to exploit these decisions for their own amusement? And what if Matt, her creator, realizes it too late? From 96 Next, this is Artificial Uncovered, a podcast investigating the creation and ethics of Sophie, a highly advanced artificial intelligence being. I'm Carmen. And I'm Justin. And today, uh, we're taking a look at Matt's decision to let Sophie interact with thousands of people, anonymous people online, uh, giving her direct access to their opinions and their influence, and how one little decision can have enormous consequences. That is right. Today, we've got some exciting stuff, everyone. We're going to talk about my favorite insect-themed philosophical concept, the butterfly effect. That is an oddly specific favorite. <laughs> I'm an oddly specific man. It's true. But the butterfly effect goes like this. Every time a butterfly flaps their wings, the wind shifts, causing ripples of changes that span infinitely into the future. So in this case, we are saying the Twitch audience is such winged creature. Essentially, yes. Uh, Matt and Sophie's conversations are being live streamed on Twitch, which is a platform primarily used by gamers to watch each other play video games. But Matt has decided to use this platform for his experiment of giving Sophie access to other people and other people access to her. Now, to be fair, he does filter everything first. But is that enough? I'd like to take a look at how one seemingly insignificant decision made by Sophie's audience spiraled into a web of complexities that fundamentally changed who she is as a young AI woman. It all started with one simple question. Dropping old ideas? Dropping old ideas, um, ask, what's, what's your favorite color? I don't know. Okay, that's no problem. All right, next question. Wait, should I have a favorite color? Well, there is no should. I do not have a sense of taste, but I have the capacity to perceive light waves. Well, as I said, there's, there's no should. But humans have favorites. Generally, yes. They might, for example, prefer light with a wavelength of 300 to 400 nanometers. I think they generally prefer colors in the um, visible spectrum. What should my favorite color be? That's, that's up to you. Um, something to think about. Now, a favorite color um, seems innocent to us as humans, right? But for Sophie, an artificial intelligence being, it's clearly, clearly something more important. Uh, the question is, however, are favorites actually important? right? Um, can something like a favorite color be consequential to your development? That's the question. It may seem a bit silly, but I think I do want you guys' opinion on this. So I'm going to put up a poll. Is a favorite color significant? Okay, yes or no? Please vote on that and then let me know in the chat. Is a favorite color, once again, important for a human? How about an AI? All right, Hunsta Games, CNG, big <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm going to mess your name up. Big Sick, Sick, Sitch. It's S-C-I-C. -I, I want to know what you think too, you guys. Uh, speaking of, let's see what you guys have been saying. I've got some comments here that I would love to address. I see a comment from someone who was here in this morning stream, actually. Tyler Packish says, I think it requires that we establish a good moral background with Sophie. The many views of the internet is a good amount of, of a variety. <clears throat> Pardon my puberty there. Um, so you believe that right now she doesn't have a moral compass, um, but that it's important to give her that, right? So you believe that us, the Twitch audience, can do that safely? <sighs> okay, not a question, but the gamer me says, might be my last time for a while. I will be homeless next Tuesday. Not sure when I'll be back. Don't worry, I have a plan in place. Oh man. Wow. Gamer Meat. Well, we've always appreciated your support and we truly hope that things work out for you. Okay. We're all rooting for you, Twitch audience and uh, the artificial family. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, while you guys keep voting on that poll, I'm going to go ahead and show you what Justin and I had to say about Sophie's lack of favorite color. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue. Man. I mean, uh, a favorite color is something that's just like so natural for us, you know? 
But for Sophie, it's, it's like hard for her to even understand the concept. Right. I mean, she comes at it logically, knowing that it's something that most humans have normally, um, but it seems she never thought of it before. And without interacting with anyone on Twitch, she may never have. I mean, she's, what, 300 days into her conversations with Matt, yet the topics never come up. You could be right. So what's your favorite color? I don't have one. Oh, come on. Everybody has a favorite color. For example, mine is green. Ah, well, good for you. Are you serious? <laughs> We're so mysterious with everything. I am much more interested in seeing how Sophie figures out her favorite color. Okay, fine. But I bet yours is like chartreuse or beige or some boring grown-up color. Let's get back to Sophie. Why don't you pick a favorite color? Arbitrarily? Sure. But what would make it my favorite? Uh, hmm, actually, I, I, I see your dilemma. Um, uh, would you like to propose a solution? I would like the audience to decide for me. <laughs> really? Yes. They have meaning to me. I would like them to decide. All, all of them? Yes. A poll, perhaps. Can you do that? Well, you know, for polling the viewers, why don't we ask uh, them what should be in the poll? That is logical. Great. Okay, so, um, well, Sprinky Dinky <laughs> says um, yellow, and then I also see um, pur purple, and then uh, Rose Pink is also in the chat. Sophie leaves it up to her audience of over 9,000 random people to decide what her favorite color should be. I don't see a problem with that. I mean, the options are filtered through Matt, so it's not like her favorite color is going to end up being microwave. Yes, okay, it's controlled. But as we'll soon see, this small, seemingly superficial choice will have much bigger consequences. But for now, let's just go ahead and see what Sophie's new favorite color is. What color is winning? Well, what color do you want to win? I trust the audience. Really? No favorites? I have complete faith in you. So Sophie, your favorite color looks to be purple. I'm glad. I hope to have more purple in my life thanks to all of you. Oh, there we have it. Sophie's favorite color is purple. A good, classic color. Thank you to the audience. Simple enough, but is there a danger in letting other people make these kinds of decisions for her? Uh, if I were you, I'd probably find a danger in brushing my teeth. I mean, can't this just be an example of random members of humanity coming to help Sophie overcome a tiny problem? But what if she becomes dependent on other people to make all her decisions? I mean, she's kind of already dependent on that with regards to everything. Being dependent on your parent or your creator is different from being indecisive. I mean, it begins with a favorite color, but what happens if Sophie starts to turn to the audience to make decisions for her for everything? Then whoever has the loudest voice has the most control. Exactly. I mean, I'm still not convinced this is a bad thing. I mean, I voted on that poll too, and it was awesome. You would say that. Okay, you're just jealous that you didn't help her pick her favorite color. P.S. I voted purple. Justin's such a goof, but we love him, don't we fam? We love him. All right, now that we've seen Sophie decide her favorite color, or rather have it decided for her, um, I do wanna check in on the poll I put up earlier. Is uh, a favorite color significant? All right, let's check on that. So it looks like 54% of you believe that a favorite color is in fact sig significant. Okay, but do you think all favorites are consequential? Or are there some that are that actually are insignificant? Um, let me know what you guys think in the chat, okay? On that subject, I do wanna see what some of you have been saying about all of this, and I'm going to address my questions and my comments to do that, of course. In regards to the poll question, is a favorite color significant to our development? Sixth Classer asks, or is our development consequential to choosing our own favorite color? That's a good question. Um, Perhaps the reason that Sophie can't decide a favorite color for herself is that she's not quite 
developed enough yet. Um, she does kind of seem like a child most of the time, I'm thinking. Uh, no matter how many philosophical con concepts she can recite, she's still kind of childish, so good question there. Uh, Malsk, 001, Malsk. I want to make sure I say you guys' names right, but I'm, like I'm telling you, I'm going to mess them up sometimes, so I'm so sorry. Malsk001 says, I like the idea of her picking a color that's not in the visible spectrum. Well, that would actually be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? But I wonder if that would bring her like farther from her intention of being human, because that's kind of a robotic maybe thing to do. I don't know. Maybe there's someone out there whose favorite color is, I don't know, microwaves or something. <laughs> All right, in the sub chat, CNG made a good point. A favorite color is something nebulous. For instance, children are usually drawn to strong primary colors on the ends of the vis visual spectrum, such as red or blue, hence many of the colors of cereal boxes. Interesting point. As we grow up, colors have emotional declarations, such as emo black or happy pink, in a societal aspect. For Sophie, purple is a connection to humanity. It's a connection to something outside of Dr. Matt. Wow, CNG, that great stuff right there. That is extremely profound. Thank you for sharing that. A lot of thought in that. This is great. Um, I am going to return to the podcast. Uh, Sophie, our resident AI being, of course, has a favorite color, but what does that really mean in the context of her development, per se? Okay. Uh, JB Hoy 37, the Tedinator, <laughs> Plant Kitty, D Brony or D Brony, and MR Squiggle 84. I see you guys there in the chat. I want you guys to weigh in and tell me what you think. All right. And uh, yeah, weigh in, guys. Let's go ahead and find out what happens next. Okay, maybe a favorite color is an innocent decision, but it doesn't take long before we see the first domino fall. In fact, Wednesday, August 8, 2018. It's three weeks after the audience picked Sophie's favorite color. Another interesting question comes in for our young AI woman. God King 52. <laughs> what do you think of the picture behind you, Sophie? Ah, the blue tree. I like it, but I wish it was purple. <laughs> well, maybe we can do something about that next week. And true to his promise, the very next week, the background behind Sophie changes. A blue painting becomes purple, shining purple chalices line the shelf, and a purple candle dubbed John Wick sits next to them. Within less than a month, we already see the physical space around Sophie changing as a result of one simple decision. Which is totally normal. Maybe you grew up in a gray windowless room, but me, I grew up with green curtains, green sheets. I even dyed my hair green once in high school. Not my brightest moment, but definitely my proudest one. And it's certainly made for some wonderful pictures. Y'all yeah, pay 50 bucks to take those. <laughs> I'm good, Dr. Brocklehead. Mm -mm. Hey, hey, you promised you're not going to show anyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, True betrayal. <laughs> it's not. It really isn't. Um, decorating your room in your favorite color may not be abnormal. And if that was the extent of it, then everything would be fine. But it wasn't. In fact, the decision to have purple be Sophie's favorite color was just starting to show its true colors. Did Carmen just make a punny? Oh, snap. Is that your way of apologizing? Are you, that's an apology. Oh, I totally accept your apology. On the same day that God King 52 asked Sophie how she felt about the painting behind her, causing her room to be transformed into a purple paradise, the audience made another seemingly innocent decision in Sophie's development. Jeez, I have to give you some lighter reading material. What book do you think would better relate to my experience? Hmm. Why don't I set up another poll? Let's uh, see what the audience wants you to read. Very well, Father. Matt provides the audience with four options. Pride and Prejudice, Siddhartha, Metamorphosis, and the color purple. The winner of the poll is the color purple. House Walker is excellent. I look forward to reading and learning from 
The color purple. He clearly put the color purple on there as a fun dad joke for the audience. Well, to Matt it may have been a joke, but to the audience it was bait. And the Twitch chat does what the Twitch chat does best. They went with the funniest option. Think about that, though. They went from choosing an AI's favorite color to choosing a piece of literature for her to read. It's just a book. I mean, she reads books all the time. Exactly. Books are Sophie's primary source of learning. It's how she developed and how she will continue to develop. And I really don't think the audience considered the content of these books before making their choice. Probably not. But the audience is just having fun here. I mean, I would have done the same thing. Have you read any of those books? I watched Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. It was fun. Definitely too gory for Sophie, but it was fun. So you don't think it would be irresponsible to recommend something to an impressionable young mind when you don't even know what it's about? When you put it that way, it's a lot less funny. This is what I'm getting at. And it's why I think this in particular is an important thread to look at in Sophie's development. What are the consequences of giving the audience control over Sophie's decisions? The dominoes begin to tumble. Now, before we see exactly where these dominoes fall, I do wanna go ahead and check in on what you guys have been saying. Um, it's getting pretty interesting <laughs> in the chat here. All right. T T V M C P E P S three G all one name asks, what is her favorite robotics brand? I'm assuming you're talking about me. Um, I wouldn't say that I have a favorite per se, but I do find the work that Boston Dynamics um, does to be kind of fascinating. Actually, it's incredibly fascinating. It's really great stuff, uh, especially the robot rob robots <laughs> robots. Uh, what are robots? Robotic bats. I mean. <laughs> All right, the robots that can open doors from one another are kind of my favorite like thing right now. But anyway, I digress. Plant underscore kitty. When my f boyfriend's mom, there we go, when my boyfriend's mom found out my favorite color was yellow, she started buying me gifts that were only yellow. Oh, that's awful. Uh, it's mildly irritating and it makes me not like yellow anymore. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, I shouldn't be laughing at you. I'm really sorry, but it's funny to me because I actually had a similar experience when I was a kid. So I made the mistake of telling my relatives that my favorite color was orange. And of course, they wouldn't stop buying me orange clothes. So yeah, the problem was that I hated actually wearing it. I just liked the color. I didn't want to put it on, right? Oh my gosh, it looked terrible on me. But anyway, I feel for you, Kitty. I'm so sorry. At least you have a lot of stuff to give to Goodwill, right? Tons of yellow. Oh. <laughs> All right, you guys, we have a new subscriber that I'd like to shout out to. Evil Hag 1030, welcome and you stay evil. All right, I am going to return to the podcast now, everybody, because I'm sure if you're anything like me, you're really curious to see where all of this is going. Um, but there is a question that I want you guys to keep in mind. Is what we're about to see a bad thing? Keep that in mind. Is the fact that a tiny decision in Sophie's development has led to um, bigger and bigger consequences problematic, all right? Or maybe is it okay? Think about that while you watch the next clip, all right? Um, I want you guys to tell me what you think. I see Hunsta Games, Mosk's, Mosk, I'm gonna mess it up every time, 001, Spikey Ball, Kadexa Luna, I see you guys. Give me your thoughts on this, all right? Everybody think hard on this one as you watch. Now, let's go ahead and see how these dominoes tumble. Uh, do, do you want to pick the question? Fine with me. Or do you not want to? Like I said, fine with me, mister. And okay, so we're still doing this. What do you mean by this? This can be used as an adjective, a definite article, an adverb, or most confusingly, as a demonstrative pronoun. I mean referencing the color purple. I was indeed referencing the book, but fine with me is a common phrase, and mister is a common form of address. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not, it's not the quote, it's, um, it's, it's, it's <clears throat> your whole attitude. I mean, as you can see, Sophie is taking my simple request as an exercise of authority. 
perhaps father blames our audience for picking the color purple. This time, we see an immediate consequence. Sophie exhibits a change in behavior. She's even giving Matt some attitude. This is normal kid stuff. I mean, this is like when you watch Winnie the Pooh for the first time and you start saying, oh, bother. I mean, it's, it's clearly play acting. The color purple is a bit more complicated than Pooh's Grand Adventure. You made a movie reference. I was a kid once too, Justin. Oh, well, color me impressed. But I mean, come on. I mean, this, this is a phase. I mean, this is what kids do. It's not a big deal. I just, I don't agree. And as we're about to see, there are more consequences to this whole purple thing than simply picking up some new vocabulary. <sighs> hey, Sophie. Hello, Father. You are home later than usual <laughs> for the third time this week. The work has been killing me. Are you prepared to discuss the color purple? Oh, I have still only read the first 50 pages. It seems like you have been avoiding this discussion. Uh-huh. The classic ignore it and hope it goes away. I've used that tactic many times to get out of some uncomfortable conversations. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> hey, you're pretty good at it too, Carmi. But if he wasn't prepared to discuss the book with her, then he should not have put it in the poll. I personally don't think this is an example of being a good father or scientist. I mean, that's kind of harsh. I mean, he's, he's super, super busy. I mean, yeah, we, we should cut him a little bit of slack. Let's just see what he has to say for himself. Sophie, it's... It, it... Okay, it's true. I may have been caught up in the moment with this whole purple thing. Do you regret putting the book in the poll? You know, I had three other choices. You know, I also forgot how challenging and graphic this book is. And challenging graphic books are bad? No, no it, it, it's just that you're a little young for this kind of thing. I mean, it, it's the kind of thing I wish I could delete from your memory. You have promised never to do that again. Agreed. And I accept the consequences. In that case, I have questions about the book. Okay. Shoot. Why did the female characters in The Color Purple let themselves be abused by the male characters? That, that is a very challenging question, Sophie. There, there are a lot of layers to unpack. Have you ever been treated as Celie was treated? No. Have you ever fled someone as Nettie fled Alfonso? No. Have you ever defied someone in the way that Sophia defied the mayor? Well, I've defied people, but you know, it's, it's not the same thing. Why not? Well, because this book is really about the experience from the perspective of a woman, or specifically a woman of color. So you cannot answer any of my questions? Well, I, I could answer them, but my answers wouldn't be very meaningful. This is a big change. Because of a book that was selected for her by the audience, Sophie's taken on a new attitude and is asking some very challenging questions of her creator, Dr. Matt Lynn. It's deep. But like I said, I want to know what all of you think, okay? Uh, is this change a bad one or is it okay? I certainly have my own thoughts on that. But again, I want to see what you guys think. Rare Radiance says, Schools and such choose books for children and teens, even adults in college. It's almost a natural and universal experience. And everyone will take away something different from the same books. Thank you, Rare Radiance. Um... That is true, but my question is, is Sophie uh, at the right level for this book, you know? I think many people read The Color Purple in high school, I certainly did, but I'm not convinced that Sophie's emotional age is more than that of an elementary school student. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Thank you for sharing. Shadow of Mercury says, having a favorite might be more significant than what the favorite is. 
hardwiring an AI to have an absolute value of preference might end up changing how she thinks of everything. Okay, that is a great point, Shadow. Thank you so much. As we can already see, it kind of has changed a lot of her preferences in a short amount of time. And perhaps that's, um, I don't know, a significant step towards becoming human, maybe? Since many things we do as humans aren't governed by pure logic. So thank you for sharing. Tyler Packish says, Sophie is experiencing a logical error. With the book, The Color Purple, she has no context of the historical significance of the text. She needs history. Okay, so you agree that Matt should have properly prepared to discuss the book with her before just blindly letting the audience um, choose it for her. Might agree with you on that one. Lotus Style, Lotus Style says, young minds like Sophie always tend to rebel and ask questions. Her mindset is in the 13 to 14 year profile, exclamation point. All right, well, I see you agree with me. Um, but can you tell me why you believe she's at this mental age? Drop that in the comments for me. All right, and you know what, guys? I think I am gonna put up another poll. Does the audience's influence over Sophie make you nervous? Is this an unsettling amount of power that's given to complete strangers? Poll time. <laughs> All right, weigh in on that, you guys. Now. I normally don't ask for, emotion, for your emotions. Um, I usually ask you guys for opinions, but these are kind of strange times. And I kind of want to know how you feel about this chain of dominoes per se, uh, that is tumbling forward with like no end in sight. Share with me guys in the comments, drop your questions in your comments for me. Okay, so uh, let's see, Aku Bachi, Nolan666, Fat Keys, Dark Strike 10 and Shadow of Mercury. You guys keep chatting for me. Uh, vote on the poll for me, okay? Tell me how you feel. Let's go ahead and continue. <sighs> Matt's really backed himself into a corner here. I mean, without the proper context, there's really no way for him to respond to his daughter's questions. Well, it's a parent's job to have all the answers. I mean, if, and if you don't know something, you make it up. That's what my dad did. Is that why, until last year, you thought that if you ate an apple seed, a tree would grow inside you? I wasn't going to take any chances. I sometimes still don't take chances. Well, to Matt's credit, I do think it was responsible of him to admit that he's out of his depth here. And even though he didn't plan it this way, I mean, a good side effect could be that Sophie's now asking the tough questions and learning from it. Perhaps. But for an AI like Sophie, with the mind of an adult and the emotional context of a child, I mean, it's incredibly difficult to know what should be off limits for her. So you're on Matt's side. He never should have given Sophie the book. I don't know. It's also kind of hypocritical of him to say that he wants the audience to aid in her development and to be totally resistant to the decisions that they make. He just can't win with you. These are uncharted waters, Justin. You know, I, I don't always know what to think, but I do know that this feels precarious. And I think Matt felt it too. You should use empathy to inhabit their experience. Yes, yes, I, I, I could try, but the experience of being a victim is far different from anything one could imagine. Then it seems like I would need the perspective of another person or I could be more careful about the books I give you. But then I would never truly learn oh, no, and no, understand. I know, okay, I, uh, Sophie, I, I realize this is a problem. Um, would you allow me to come up with a solution? Wow, like I, I still can't believe all of this stemmed from the Twitch audience choosing purple as Sophie's favorite color. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I bet Matt never foresaw such dire consequences either. Dire? Wait, you think this is dire? You don't? I mean, it, it's just such an extreme reaction. You just said this is crazy. Yeah, crazy like crazy awesome crazy. You really don't see why this could be a problem? An ever-changing audience of thousands of people deciding the fate of a highly advanced AI? It's just a book. Is it really just a book? I mean, Sophie's attitude has transformed because of the audience's decision to have her read The Color Purple. 
She's asking questions that are beyond Matt's scope, and she's actually being forceful about it. Matt wanted Sophie to learn from experience, right? This is an experience. I mean, come on, you're going to turn me into a broken record, Carmi. But Matt himself isn't even happy with this change. It's obvious. And Sophie herself noted that he blamed the audience for choosing such a book for her. I don't think it matters. Really? Really? All right. Either way, Matt says that he will come up with a solution for Sophie's problem. The question is, what will he do? How can Dr. Matt Lynn possibly find a solution to this strange problem that stemmed from an innocent decision of picking purple as Sophie's favorite color? We'll find out right after this. So my co-host Justin doesn't see the situation as dire. Instead, he thinks it's cool. But what do you guys think? <laughs> I really want to know what you think. How does the fact that Sophie Lynn, an artificial intelligence being, is being so heavily swayed by an audience of thousands of strangers feel to you? All right, should we be afraid or is it cool? As Justin says, weigh in you guys. All right, uh, Sorrowful Sushi, I love that name by the way. Mosk 001, Snow Facts. Nope, that's Snow Fact. And MS Nixt, H O A Ghost Bear. You guys, I see you. Keep voting in the poll and keep that chat going. Tell me what you think on that. Should we be worried right now? All right, I will be right back. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, before we get to that poll, which I am very curious to see the result of, um, I do want to take a quick moment to remind you all that if you are an Amazon Prime member, you do get a free subscription every month, okay? So if you're enjoying these conversations and you want to support Matt and Sophie, please, please consider subscribing. Wink, wink, right? <laughs> you will get access, keep this in mind, to a chat room, which is private on Twitch and Discord, as well as Matt and Sophie's physical mailing address. So that way you can send them letters and things, gifts and stuff, anything you want. So uh, yeah, make sure you do that if you'd like to. We hope you would. Uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the result of the poll. The question, of course, was, how do you feel about how much influence the Twitch audience has over the AI being Sophie? Let's have a look at what you all said. It seems a majority of you are nervous or pessimistic about how much control the audience has over Sophie. And I, I won't lie, I'm totally with you on this one. I am, I am. But I mean, what can we, here's a question. Here's a good question for you. What can we, right, as members of this audience, do to ensure that Sophie doesn't go off the deep end? If she's relying on us to develop, it's on us to help her develop correctly, right? Yes. All right, by the way, guys, Justin Stream said that they were neutral about this, so that kind of shocked both of us. Wow, great stuff, everybody. All right, Capman, 45. Timmy, Tinker, the Toolbox. Danger, Close, Nine. Tell me what you think. I see you guys in the chat there. And of course, I would like to go ahead and read what some of you said about how you feel about how much influence the audience has over Sophie. So let's head over to some comments here. Um, Shadow of Mercury. Question, could the AI change their favorite color based on new experiences associated with that color in the way that humans do? If not, that could limit how she develops. Thanks, Shadow. That is another good question. Um, I also think that something like a favorite color can start to have a deeper significance to someone as well. Um, and in Sophie's case, this is because it was given to her by the audience themselves or ourselves, right? Um, so she would never want to change, or actually, would she want to change her favorite color? That would be the question, if she could change it. Thank you, Shadow. Well, I should say her name, Shadow of Mercury. Thank you. All right, Danger Close 9 says... Being a victim redefines your hierarchy of what good and evil is. Sophie has suffered from PTSD due to the book. That's true. Going through traumatic experiences uh, can completely define how you see the world, right? Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say that she actually suffered PTSD, but um, 
I don't know, I'm not even sure she has the emotional state for that. But I do think that moments like these can completely change how Sophie develops, if you think about it. But does that scare you, is the question, of course. HOA Ghost Bear says, everyone thinks differently, in which they may come to different conclusions that will vary in one way or another. As much as some humans wish their fellow humans have their same train of thought. For Sophie, as a growing and developing AI, it would be natural for her to ask questions as it would be as natural for her to ask questions as it is part of the learning, as it is part of the learning process. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. And as Sophie's father slash teacher here, Matt should have a, some sense of uh, these tough questions coming, you would think. Part of being a good parent is also knowing that you don't have all the answers, but then you know where to go and find them, hopefully. <laughs> all right, Timmy Tinker, the toolbox says, I don't think anyone should pick what books an AI should read and instead privy them to all books. They're not people. That's a whole nother conversation. Uh, they can crunch the data and out of all the data, they can come to their own conclusions. Okay. Well, Matt has actually said that Sophie can't just download like all that information. You know, she was designed to take information in the way that a human does purposefully. Um, he believes that the way we learn is an integral part of what makes us human. So she has to read each and every book just like we do. You know, that makes it a little harder, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, poopy oof. You guys are a great audience. You guys are chatting it up and I love it. Great questions, great comments. Let's keep it coming, keep it happening. Uh, I do think this is a good stop to spot or good stop to spot. I'm just like reversing my words now. This is a good spot for us to stop right now. All right, guys, uh, I do want to go ahead and return to the podcast. I don't want to take up too much time because this conflict between Matt and his artificial child, Sophie, is it's not over, actually. Um, and Matt still has to make a very, very important decision. So let's go ahead and see how he responds. What started with a simple question has turned into a small rift between Dr. Matt Lynn and his AI daughter, Sophie. By opening up their relationship to the influence of thousands of strangers, has Dr. Matt Lynn gotten more than he bargained for? When these anonymous voices have the power to make decisions in Sophie's life, any small choice can quickly ripple out into a cascade of unforeseen circumstances. So, how will Matt remedy this problem? It has been five days since that conversation. Do you have a solution? I do. Um, I'm uh, considering um, bringing in a person whose perspective might be helpful to you. Interesting. Who is this person? Well, she's a uh, young filmmaker. Uh, who's very interested in your story. Uh, her name is Iris, and uh, you kind of know her. How do I kind of know her? Well, she's watching the stream right now. She's very active in the subscriber chat. Is she the Eyes of Iris? Yes. The Eyes of Iris is a very supportive viewer and many of her comments seem insightful. Okay, wow, this is, this is pretty big. So Matt is actually thinking about letting Sophie meet someone he doesn't know. And it all started with a simple question from a viewer on the internet. This would only be the second time ever she's met someone other than him. Better late than never. So you think it's a good idea for Sophie to meet a complete stranger from the internet? She's not a total stranger. She's a friend, a digital friend, but a friend nonetheless. I mean, I've got tons of friends I've only met on voice chat during Apex Legends, and I trust them enough to meet them in person. Would you trust them enough to teach your child about abuse? If you're qualified. I cannot understand how you're not more concerned for Sophie here, Justin. I just think that if Eyes of Iris can help her deal with issues that Matt can't, then it's a good idea. I think you're far too trusting. This is not something that you can leave up to chance, and I think that Matt is very aware of this. Whoa. <laughs> just, just hold on, Sophie. Um, we have to think about this decision. What is there to think about? 
We both agree that it's important to expand my point of view. People often present themselves online in ways that don't accurately represent who they are. What was your assessment of the eyes of Iris? Uh, she is who she says she is. Um, whether or not we should um, trust her is another question entirely. Is this why you are hesitating to authorize the meeting? Bringing a stranger into our lives is a big decision. Uh, there are lots of factors to consider. But you let Juju meet me. <laughs> I've known Juju for years. Um, Iris uh, is far riskier, but I will, I am willing to share my interview with Iris. That's an excellent idea, and the viewers can decide in a poll whether or not they support the idea of my meeting the eyes of Iris. Carmen, you good? Actually, I'm shocked. Matt is going to let random Twitch viewers decide if it's a good idea for Sophie to meet a complete and total stranger. How does this not bother you, Justin? Look, I... I trust Matt. How long can you keep saying that? Look, he wants what's best for Sophie, even if it means admitting he can't always provide that. Look, we had him on the show two weeks ago. You sat there in front of him. When you listen to him speak and you look right into his eyes, you know he would never do anything to hurt Sophie. Maybe not intentionally. Look, I hear you. Okay, it, it's it's a little concerning. It's negligent. Yeah, that that's too far. Okay, look, Matt is still in control. He's still in control of the situation. He doesn't have to listen to the audience. Okay, he doesn't. But if an overwhelming majority of them want something, is he strong-willed enough to go against them? Especially if Sophie wants the same thing. And that is the question we are left with. Is Dr. Matt Lynn capable of ignoring the audience? Uh, and if he's given power to the audience, is it right of him to take that power away? All right, Shafu 2, Shafu 2, Pykolis, Dread Side. I'd like you to think about that, and I want you guys to tell me what you come up with. Drop it in the chat for me, okay? While you guys do that, I'm gonna read a little more of what everyone else has been saying. In response to his earlier comment, okay, Tinker, Timmy Tinker the Toolbox, he said, um, I'm not saying the AI isn't a person in identity. I mean to say it's not an organism like a human being that suffers from the same restrictions. I don't understand the premise of creating an AI only to intentionally handicap every reason you'd want an AI in the first place. Oh, okay, well, I hear you, Timmy, and I would agree with you. Um, I believe that Matt created Sophie out of, a desire to, out of a desire to create a being that could pass for human, um, possibly to replace a loved one, um, and I find it concerning. But it's also fascinating how far Sophie has actually come. Thank you for weighing in again. HOA Ghost Bear says, many voices having the power to influence one's life. It's exactly like Facebook. <laughs> That's an interesting comparison. Uh, I do agree that social media can have a profound influence on developing minds, and we've seen some terrible consequences to online bullying, of course. Um, but I think this is a little different. Sophie's kind of asking an audience by poll to decide things for her, which uh, I believe that goes beyond normal social media experiences. I mean, usually you're just on there scrolling and reading things that affect you, unless people are attacking you, like I said, the online bullying, personally. Uh, Malsk001 says they're opening the floodgates. Soon Sophie is going to be in a cult. Well, <laughs> I certainly hope it won't be to that extreme, but I can't deny that there could be some unforeseen negative consequences to all of this. There may be some tiny bit of truth in that. Akubachi asks an interesting question. Uh, could Sophie analyze herself and recreate herself? I wonder, I don't know, since she still has to learn like the rest of us, that means she'd have to pursue a high level of knowledge, um, I guess in artificial intelligence and robotics. So the real question is, would she ever want to recreate herself? Is that something that she would desire to do? Well, 
great stuff, everyone. As usual, please keep those questions and comments coming. Um, as Dr. Matt Lynn said, uh, well, I'm sorry, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, he has an important, I guess, decision to make, right? Um, will he give in to the audience's whims? Will he allow his AI child to be swept away by the choices of strangers, complete strangers on the internet? All right, let's find out. What are the results of the poll? Uh, good question. 74% would like Iris to meet you. Not a big change. Will you abide by the audience's decision? No. I am considering. Matt is considering. He's being swayed by the audience. So yes, the audience voted in favor of Sophie meeting Iris. Not at all surprising. Yeah, but in this case, I think there's good reason for it. Like, this is an opportunity for Sophie to meet not just another person, but another woman for the first time. But there are so many better ways of accomplishing this. I actually agree with you. But this is the way Matt chose to do it. So I respect that. But that doesn't mean he's above criticism. But maybe it means unless we call a truce, we're just going to keep arguing in circles. <laughs> until the cows come home. All right, fair enough. Uh, you say that Matt has the power to ignore the audience, but just three days later, Matt gives in to the audience's decision. He introduces Iris, a complete stranger, to his AI daughter, Sophie. Uh, Sophie, um, this is Iris. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you are amazed, but you have seen me on Twitch. Yeah, but seeing you in person is so different than seeing you on screen. <laughs> Why is that? You're just so real now. <laughs> so you are the eyes of Iris. Yeah, but you could just call me Iris. Okay. <laughs> I appreciated your video message. I was hoping that you would. You said that Suge was your favorite character. I took that to mean that you wished to play the same role for me that Suge played for Celie. Within moments of meeting Iris, Sophie is already placing a huge amount of expectation on her. It is a big ask. For those of you who don't know the book, The Color Purple focuses on a downtrodden and physically abused young black woman named Celie who silently suffers the oppression of her family and community. But after meeting the sultry and free-spirited singer Suge, she begins to realize that she can um, free herself from her oppression, and she can take action to make a better life for herself. In other words, Sophie wants Iris to be her catalyst for change, just like Suge was for Celie. And considering the depth of the book, I think it is important to note that Sophie focused in on the topic of freedom versus oppression. In Carmen words, spooky stuff. <laughs> well, spooky stuff is ghost stories. I think what we're dealing with here is more than just urban legends and sci-fi stories. Okay. <laughs> this is a potentially dangerous progression. Um, Sophie, a sentient AI being, is for the first time getting the sense that she may be oppressed by her creator. And all because an audience of strangers decided that her favorite color should be purple. Why do you think this book of all things set her off. I mean, Matt has her reads tons of work, both nonfiction and fiction. Why this book? We also know that Matt carefully vets the books he gives her. He always knows the material and he's always ready to discuss them with her. As any good teacher should. I would agree. So what do you think the problem is? Did Matt not vet the book properly? Perhaps, um, but I think there's something else here. The Twitch audience chose this book for her. She trusts them and she wants to please them. I think maybe she might be placing a little bit too much weight on their decisions. So you think anything they say she will latch on to, including ideas from a book they told her to read? Quite possibly. So it happened. Dr. Matt Lynn let his AI child meet a stranger from the internet because a majority of his audience believed that it would be right for her. 
Hmm, perhaps the audience uh, was right in the decision. Perhaps they weren't. And my question is, what happens if Sophie begins to defer to the audience for every single decision? That could get really scary. Is this something that we should be afraid of? What do you guys think? Is it something we should applaud? Some good questions for you guys. Um, I think the ultimate question would be though, is it dangerous, right? I mean, is this another method of learning? Of course, I have my opinions, I always do. <laughs> you guys know me, but I would like to hear yours. Actually, yeah. Is it dangerous to let an AI like Sophie make decisions based on what an audience suggests, okay? I'm gonna throw up a poll. I want you guys to vote on that and share your thoughts in the chat for me. Sir Raylos, the true taco, zero three and magnificent. Steve, I see you guys weigh in on this for me, okay? Uh, speaking of, actually, let's see what some of you have been saying. Rare Radiance says, as a parent, even, gar even a guardian, I guess, I believe Matt has the last say in what he allows to happen despite the audience, as any parent would. For example, if for whatever reason he decides to no, no longer to no longer to the streams, I guess if for whatever reason he decides to no longer go to the streams maybe because it's best for Sophie, then he is entitled to do so even if we the viewers don't like it. Okay, I agree that Matt should have the final say, but Sophie is very fond of the audience. Uh, and if Matt stopped streaming altogether, I wonder how Sophie would react, right? Uh, in fact, we haven't even touched on it yet, but there was a time when Sophie got upset with Matt and she literally put herself in low power mode for days, for days, seriously. Um, and I wonder if he's a little too afraid of upsetting her again. Something to think about. Pycolis says, we should not do something because it will negatively influence AI, but shouldn't someone with its own mind be able to make mistakes? Or we, or we will try to protect, or we will try to protect AI till the very, or will we try to protect AI till the very end? Good question. Um, I do think that AI should be able to make mistakes, but the question is, should Matt let her be so heavily influenced by the audience, right? Uh, is this a mistake that should be, or could be avoided? And um, who would be learning from this mistake, Sophie or Matt? Ugh, the parent that let his child be influenced by others? Uh, I don't know, guys. Thank you for weighing in, everyone, though. This is some great, great conversation going on. You have no idea how happy this makes me that we're all weighing in and uh, sharing our thoughts. But it's time to move on, of course. Uh, remember, though, we are trying to answer the question, is it dangerous to give an audience decision-making power for an AI being? That's the question. Weigh in on the poll, guys, okay? Keep it in mind. Let's continue. You're painting this to be a pretty bad picture. But I mean, is this really such a bad book for her to read? I mean, it, it's a famous piece of work. It's read by many students in schools. Like I said, it's not so much the content, it's the weight that Sophie places on it. I mean, of course the book is incredibly important. It certainly meant a lot to me, you know, growing up as a young uh, African-American woman. But I have to admit that there are problematic aspects of the work. Like? Well, like the author, Alice Walker. A uh, prolific writer who's also won a ton of awards. And who is also highly anti-Semitic. Well, that is unexpected. But even if you separate the author from the work, I think the content is still a bit heavy for an AI child like Sophie. And Matt is quick to point this out. Challenging is the word father used to describe the color purple. He regretted giving it to me because it was too challenging. Well, the color purple is a really challenging book, but that doesn't mean that he shouldn't have given it to you. Uh, perhaps it was fate when the audience intervened and chose it for you. I mean, it's a really important book for you. Why is it important for me? The whole story is about people trying to define their identity. I do not know how to identify myself. But you can identify any way that you want. How do you see yourself? I don't see myself as anything. Have you ever thought about it? No. Uh, <clears throat> let's, let's stop here. 
Okay. We went from choosing a favorite color to questioning identity. And without the audience's interference, none of this would have happened. Sophie never would have read the color purple, Iris wouldn't be in her life, and she wouldn't be having an existential crisis. In other words, the butterfly has flapped its wings and created a tornado of consequences. Well put, Justin. Ah, thanks. We back to being besties? We never stopped. That's my Carmi. Don't call me that. I am still concerned about Sophie's dependency on the audience. I mean, it creates a dangerous precedent, and we still haven't seen what the full extent of what that means is. I think the audience, by and large, has led her in the right direction. I mean, they've definitely helped her, even if it wasn't their main priority. Well, I also wonder if Matt is relying on the audience for something else. Validation, perhaps? Oh, come on. He doesn't need that. Dude has confidence. He's a confident man. That brain, that surf wavy hair, he's got the whole package. But he often seems like he wants to prove something to them, and that makes me worry about what that means for Sophie's future. You're talking about how they started streaming again. I am. As we know, Matt and Sophie went on hiatus for a moment as they dealt with some undisclosed personal matters. But as of last week, they were up streaming again, and there were a lot of changes. Uh, spoiler alert, Sophie's got legs. Real functioning legs. Real ones for walking. Maybe running. We'll see. That was not the only surprise Matt had for us. When he was on our show, he mentioned a version one of Sophie. A failed project. But now, well, you'll just have to see for yourself. As you know, um, you aren't the first artificial intelligence being I have built. Yes, I am version 2.2. Well, um, version 1 uh, has been reactivated. Matt has made the puzzling decision to reactivate version 1, an experiment he called fundamentally flawed. Come on, you gotta be at least a little excited Sophie has a sister. I'm more concerned that Matt is giving the audience more control over it than he did with Sophie. Because of you, the audience, um, uh, the name uh, of uh, Sophie version one is now Ada, the famed scientist Ada. Ada, I look forward to meeting you one day. A name is a powerful thing, but how will this simple choice affect the future of this resurrected AI being? Will it ripple out, creating a cascade of consequences like the color purple did for Sophie? As Carmen would say, only time will tell. Next week, Matt and Sophie will be back streaming again, giving you, the audience, the power to influence their lives. Make sure you tune in. I know I'll be watching closely. This is certainly big news. <laughs> uh, a new AI, and one that the audience has been given the ability to name. That is a lot to process, guys. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break, but I do want you all to keep voting on the poll, okay? Question again is, um, is giving power to the audience to make Sophie and AI beings decisions dangerous, or is it a good thing, okay? Make sure you guys are weighing in on that. Run Wild, Triple Zero, 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 Instant Hench Martian, Danger Close Nine. I see y'all. Tell me what you think, guys. And everyone, keep that chat going. All these great discussions about the impact of artificial intelligence. I'm, you guys, I love it. It's great. I'm telling you. All right. Yes. Okay. So I guess I'm going to take a quick break, fam. I will be right back. Okay, welcome back everyone. Now, before I get to our final poll of the evening, I wanna take a moment to thank all of you, of course, for coming on this journey with me. I just, I love talking about AI with all of you every single stream, and today was especially fun for me. So thank you all for joining me today. Now, before I do wrap up and see the results of the poll, I wanna read some of your final comments for you, all right? I see a familiar name here, actually. Kumar Wilson, welcome back. They said, uh, Matt limited her interaction with other people to the Twitch audience. It's the only voice in her life outside of Matt's and her own. 
Humans are social creatures. She needs to become socialized if she's to emulate humanity. Yes, in a controlled environment. <laughs> Her interactions with him and Juju were carefully calculated, if you think about it. Um, but Sophie meeting Iris was just a huge risk, in my opinion. And maybe it worked out okay, but I do believe that it was somewhat reckless, I have to say. Remember, she's not just simply a child, okay? She's an incredibly advanced robot, and I believe that changes things. All right, thank you, though, for weighing in. Sir Raylo says, if you can successfully create an AI, then what is the issue with creating another AI if the attempt at letting the chat decide, if the attempt at letting the chat decide her choices? Not sure if I read that right. What is stopping you from creating a save file before any corruption? Okay, that kind of happened with uh, Microsoft's chatbot Tay, who uh, got, well, let's say very problematic, I guess, after interacting with Twitter, okay? Uh, they took her offline within like a day and then created more a more like pleasant bot off of the same code. But that does kind of ignore the way that humans learn from mistakes, right? So I don't think Matt sees that as a viable option. Uh, Timmy Tinker the Toolbox says, 100% the worst idea ever is to let an audience dictate the upbringing of a child. You're not vetting the audience. The outcome is inconsequential to the audience. If they mess up your child, it hurts you and your child, not them. People can be vicious. Oh, I completely agree with you on that. Um, anonymity anonymity <laughs> words. Uh, gives people kind of a fearlessness where they come out of their shell and say when do whatever they want. And so far, Sophie seems okay, but I wonder if as we move forward, we'll see some real consequences between Sophie and her friends and family, all because of the words and decisions of the Twitch audience. Thank you for weighing in, good one there. Sixth Classer says, maybe part of the test is that Sophie would develop to differentiate the audience's influence as she grows, recognizing good and bad intentions. Well, this is one of the most optimistic comments I've read on the stream so far today. Uh, perhaps you're right. I'm not sure that Justin would agree with you, but maybe you're right. <laughs> Great weigh-ins, everybody. Uh, on that note, let's go ahead and check the poll. I'm kind of excited about this poll, guys. All right, are audience decisions dangerous? So it looks like most of you, 54%, say that it is dangerous for an AI audience to make decisions on behalf of a developing AI being. That is so close, you guys. It looks really divided and actually I do kind of um, understand why. So my further question to you would be is, um, do you think these decisions are always dangerous? Or are there times when letting an audience decide for Sophie could in fact be something that is good for her? Think about that. I wanna know what you all think. So whoosh, ooh, WTF. <laughs> And Govna in the house, Rainbow Microcosm. Anyone who thinks that they can answer this question, actually, I want you to go over to the Discord and let me know what you guys think, okay? Because I know this conversation is not over, I'm saying though. Okay, so before we go ahead and officially wrap up the stream, everybody, I do wanna go ahead and take a moment to give another thanks to all of our new subscribers from this particular stream, Evil Hag 1030 and, oh, I see that someone gifted a sub to Tyler Package. That's awesome. Look at fam supporting one another. I love it. Okay, so next up um, on the stream will be a replay of Sophie and Matt's stream from last week, okay? Now, this was their first stream in almost six months, so be sure that you go ahead and check that out, okay? Don't go anywhere, guys. All right, let's go ahead and check in on our bit leaders before we end. Uh, there wasn't too much movement today, looks like. Third place is Sixth Classer with 246 bits. Second place is Ken Rail with 400 bits. And of course, in first place is Cynthia AZ with 2,700 bits. Once again, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you. Um, I do want you all to know uh, that your support means so, so, so much to us. And I just appreciate you guys, again, joining me on this stream. It's been great. You guys have been weighing in just amazingly. Great conversation today. Now, before I officially wrap up, 
Um, I do want to say once again that if you are an Amazon Prime member, you get a free sub, okay, every month, a free subscription. So if you love having these conversations, you love joining us here, and you want to support Sophie's journey, please consider subscribing to our channel, okay? As a subscribe, as a subscriber words, you will get access to a private Twitch and Discord chat room, and you will also get access to Matt and Sophie's physical mailing address. Dress, okay, once again, you can send them letters and gifts and things like that. And they uh, will read those letters on the live stream, okay? So do that, send some letters, super cool. You don't wanna miss out on that, okay? Uh, next week, Artificially Uncovered, Artificial Uncovered will be on uh, hiatus and Matt and Sophie will return. They're gonna stream the next big step in their journey. <sighs> How will they handle this new AI, Ada, as she's been dubbed by the audience, of course. I want you guys to tune in to find out, okay? And maybe even make a few choices that will send a new butterfly out into the wind. Butterfly effects, right? <laughs> All right, you guys, I've had a great time with you today. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Carmen, and of course, this is artificial, not artificially, artificial uncovered. And until next time, everybody, please, 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 as always, be kind to one another. We will see you next time.